Dear learners, welcome you all to e-learning platform. Now we are in week two. In this week we learn the plot overview of Jenna, written by Charlotte Bronte, one of the three Bronte sisters. The other two Bronte sisters of the Victorian era of the 19th century were Emily Bronte and Annie Bronte. Me, first Ahmed, with you throughout this lecture from the beginning to the end. Let's begin. The three Bronte sisters of the Victorian era, Charlotte Bronte, Emily Bronte, and Annie Bronte, published their book novels Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, and Agnes Grey, respectively, with masculine names, masculine pen names. Charlotte Bronte took the masculine pen name of Carl Bale, Emily Bronte took Alice Bell, and Annie Bronte took Acton Bell. And those were published in 1847. So in this semester you will study one of the Bronte sisters novel who is called Charlotte Bronte and her novel is Jane Eyre and this is an autobiographical novel. To some extent it tells the story of her own life. Let's proceed on. Introduction. Jane Eyre is a novel by English author Charlotte Bronte born on 21st April 1816 and died on 31st March 1855. It was published in London, England in 1847 with the title Jane Eyre, an autobiography under the pen name Car Bell. Here is a timeline of the biography of Jane Eyre, of the biography of Charlotte Bronte, the writer of Jane Eyre. In 1816 she was born. In 1821 her mother dies and children are left with, her, with their aunt. So she was raised by her aunt in 1821. In 1824 Jane went to a religious boarding school. In 1825 uh, the boarding school Jane's two eldest sisters die. In 1831, Charlotte is pupil at girls' boarding school. In 1835, Jane became a governess at her former school. In 1839, Jane was a private governess and took her position as, took her position as private governess. In 1842, she goes to Brussels to finish studies. In 1844, uh, her sisters attempt to found their own school and fail. I mean, they tried to establish their own school. In 1845, Wines by Carr, Alice, and Acton Bell uh, were tried to be published, but in some cases, most of the publishers rejected them. So, before being novelist, they tried to become poem, poet. In 1847, Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, and Agnes Grey published one after another. And three sisters published their books. And we are going to study Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. In 1854, Charlotte marries Nicholas. In 1855, she dies. That's the short timeline of her life. Now, a short introduction to Jane Eyre and plot of her. Jane Eyre is thought to be highly autobiographical. Bronte included many events in the novel that parallel her own life. She used a masculine pen name that is Carbell because during that time the society did not allow women to publish a book or write a book. That's why the society was male dominant and Charlotte Bronte and other Bronte sisters took masculine pen names to publish their novels. 
and Charlotte Bronte's pen name was Carbell. Jen R is a Victorian novel that chronicles a women's quest for love and search for identity. First published in 1847, the book became a bestseller and established a platform for feminist writing in the 19th century. That is a cover of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, uh, published by Dover, three editions. Jane Eyre and the Gothic Plot. Uh, it is a dark romanticism. It includes mystery, haunted castle or house, dreaming and nightmares, doppelganger or alter ego, and the other personality. Every person has two personality, one is ego and the other is alter ego. Physical imprisonment, psychological entrapment and helplessness, involvement of the supernatural, psychology of horror and terror. Distinct parts. Each of three parts traces a pattern of conflict and partial resolution. The book is divided into three parts and comprises of around 30 chapters. Jane is faced with particular obstacles and opportunities in her effort to find and establish a true home. In our society we know that females find it very difficult to find their own home. Either they, are in, they reside in their parents' home or they reside in their husband's home. Chapters 1 through 10 cover Jane's childhood and schooling. The major characters include Mrs. Reed and her children, Mr. Brocklehurst, Helen Burns and Miss Temple. The main conflicts and incidents include Jane's rebellion against Mrs. Reed and her friendship with Helen. Chapters 11 through 27 tell of Jane's life as a governess at Thornfield Hall, why she falls in love with Rochester. Besides Jane, Mr. Rochester is the central character in this section. Mrs. Fairfax, Adelaide, Blanche Ingram, Grace Poole, Bertha Masson, and Mr. Masson also have significant roles in this part from chapter 11 to 27. The dramatic action in this section centers on Jane's growing love for Mr. Rochester and vice versa. That means Mr. Rochester's love for Jane and Jane's love for Rochester. Jane's fear that Rochester will marry Blanche and a series of strange incidents that occur at Thorn Films. Chapters 28 to end of the book center on Jane's life after she has fled Thornfield. The action takes place in the countryside and at Moore House and Mooton. The Reverend St. John Rivers is the other main character here, together with his two sisters. Rochester's presence remains significant in Jane's mind. The dramatic highlights in this part of the novel include Jane's attempt to find shelter, her uneasy relationship with Rivers and her return to Mr. Rochester. The novel goes through five distinct stages. Plot in brief. Five statements. Jane's childhood at Gates Head, why she is abused by her aunt and cousins. Two, her education at Low School, why she acquires friends and role models, but also suffers privations. 3. Her time as governess at Thornfield, why she falls in love with her Byronic employer Edward Rochester. 4. Her time with the Rivers family at Morton, why her cold cousin St. John Rivers proposes to her. 5. Her reunion with her beloved Rochester at his house of Ferdinand. So a fluctuation of relationship and are settled down. Characters Jane Eyre, the protagonist of the novel, Mrs. Sarah Reed, widow of Jane's uncle. 
Eliza Reed, oldest daughter in the Reed family. Georgiana Reed, youngest daughter in the Reed family. John Reed, only son in the Reed family, a bully Jane's cousin. Bessie Lee, servant at Gateshead Hall. Mrs. Temple, kind teacher at Lowood School. Helen Burns, Jane's best friend at Lowood School. Mr. Brocklehurst, headmaster at Lowood School. Edward Fairfax Rochester, master of Thornfield Hall. Bartha Rochester, mad wife of Edward Rochester. Adele, ward of Mr. Edward Rochester, Jane's pupil at Thornfield. Mrs. Alice Fairfax, housekeeper at Thornfield Hall. St. John I. Rivers, minister of the parish at Morton. Parish is mean, meaning uh, locality. Minister is um, somewhat like mayor or councillor of an area. Diana and Mary Rivers, sisters of St. John Rivers. Edward Rochester. Here the portrait is just for illustrative purpose only. Jane's employer and the master of Thornfield, he is a wealthy, passionate man with a dark secret that gives the reader much of the novel suspense. He is unconventional, ready to go against polite manners, propriety and consideration of social class. In order to interact with Jane frankly and directly, he is rude, impetuous and has spent much of his life roaming about Europe trying to avert the consequences of his youthful past. His problems are partly the result of his own recklessness, but he is a sympathetic figure and has been describing as a suffering character because of his early marriage to Bertha. Here is Jane Eyre, the heroine of the novel. The protagonist and narrator of the novel, Jane, is an intelligent, honest, plain-featured young girl that has to face oppression, inequality, and hardship. And throughout the whole novel, she was trying to find her identity and her shelter. Although she meets a series of people who threaten her autonomy, Jane repeatedly succeeds as preserving herself and maintains her principles of justice, human dignity and morality. And that is the definition of feminism. She also values intellectual and emotional fulfillment, her strong belief in social equality challenging the Victorian prejudices against women and poor or discriminations between rich and poor and men and women. That's the prejudice. Bartha. She is a complex presence, a character. She obstacles Jane's happiness. But she also increases the growth of Jane's self understanding. The mystery surrounding Bertha establishes suspense and terror to the plot and the atmosphere. Bertha serves as a reminder of Rochester's youthful Levitanism. She can also be interpreted as a symbol. She could represent Britain's fear that psychologically locked away the other cultures during the period of imperialism. Bartha was in fact from Jamaica. She also could be seen as the typical Victorian wife who is expected never to travel or work outside the house. And she embodies she embodies the true deprived women in the society who made her accompanied with the male dominating society. She is definitely is linked to the figure of social inequality of women in 19th century. She is completely opposite to the protagonist Jaina who was fighting for female or women rights in the society, equal rights. Besides man, St. John Rivers, with his sisters Mary and Diana, he is described as Jane's benefactor after she runs away from Thornfield, giving her food and shelter. He is a well-mannered man, fair, blue-eyed, with a Grecian profile, 
but cold and reserved, often controlled in his interactions with others. Because he is entirely alienated from his feelings and devoted solely to an austere ambition, he could be seen as a foil to Edward Rochester. So, John Rivers is a good person, after all. And she supported feminism. Summary. Ten-year-old orphan Jane Eyre lives unhappily with her wealthy, cruel cousins and aunt at Gates Head. Her only salvation from her daily humiliations, such as being locked up in a red room, how she thinks she sees her beloved uncle's ghost, is a kindly servant, Bessie. Jane is spared further mistreatment from the Reed family when she is sent off to school at Lowood, but there, under the artificial religious belief of the headmaster, Mr. Brocklehurst, she suffers further privations in the simple environment. She befriends Helen Burns, who upholds the doctrine of Christian forgiveness and tolerance and is taken under the wing of the superintendent Miss Temple. An outbreak of typhoon, an outbreak of typhus alerts benefactors to the school's terrible conditions. Mr. Brocklehurst is replaced and Jane excels as a student for six years and as a teacher for two years. Jane finds employment as a governess at the estate of Thornfield for a little girl, Adam. After much waiting, Jane finally meets her employer in Ward Rochester, a brooding, detached man who seems to have a dark past. Other additives around Thornfield include the occasional demonic, demonic laugh Jane hears emanating from the third story attic. Rochester always attributes it to Grace Poole, the seamstress who works up there, but Jane is never fully convinced, and the fire she has to put out one night is Rochester's bedroom plans for the doubts. Meanwhile, Jane develops an attraction for Rochester. Not based on looks, both are considered plain, but on their intellectual communion. However, the higher social standing of the beautiful Miss Ingram seemingly vaults her above Jane. Though Rochester flirts with the idea of marrying Miss Ingram, he is aware of her financial ambitions for marriage. An old acquaintance of Rochester's Richard Mason visits Thornfield and is severely injured from an attack apparently from Grace in the middle of the night in the attic. Jane, baffled by the circumstances, stands to him and Rochester confesses to her that he made an error in the past that he hopes to overturn by marrying Miss Ingram. He pays, he says that he has another governess position for Jane, Ling Tabil Swerve. Jane returns to Gates Head for a while to see the dying Mrs. Reed. When she returns to Thornfield, Rochester says he knows Miss Ingram is after him only for his money. And he asks Jane to marry him. Jane accepts, but a month later, Mason and the solicitor, Mr. Briggs, interrupt the ceremony by revealing that Rochester already has a wife, Bartha Mason, Mason's sisters, a lunatic who is kept in the lunatic, I mean, mad, who is kept in the attic in Thornfield, man, I mean, crazy, or bad tempered. Rochester confesses his past misdeeds to Jane. In his youth, he needed to marry the wealthy Bartha for money. But was unaware of her family's history of madness and how over time she became an incorrigible or hopeless, dangerous part of his life, which only imprisonment could solve. 
despite his protests that he loves Jane, she cannot agree to marry him because of his previous marriage and leaves Thornfield. Jane arrives at the desolate crossroads of Wheat Cross and is reduced to begging for food. I mean, became very poor and helpless. Fortunately, the river siblings, St. John, Diana, and Mary, take her into their home at Moore House. She develops great affection for the ladies. While the stoically religious St. John is hard to get close to and happily teaches at St. John's school, Jane learns that she has inherited a vast fortune from her uncle and that the reverse siblings are her cousins. She divides it among her new family and phases out her teaching duties. St. John is going to go on missionary work in India and repeatedly asks Jane to accompany him as his wife. She refuses, since it would mean compromising her capacity for passion in a loveless marriage. Instead, she is drawn to thoughts of Rochester and one day after experiencing a mystical connection with him, seeks him out at Thornfield. She discovers that the estate has been burned down by Bertha, who died in the fire, and the Rochester, who was blinded in the incident, lives nearby. He is overjoyed when she locates him and delays his side of the mystical connection Jane had. He and Jane marry and enjoy life together and he regains his sight in one eye. Diana and Mary both marry. While St. John continues his unmarried to try to persuade people to join a religion in India. Themes in Jaina. These I will discuss in the next week, week 3. That's the end of week 2. Thank you very much. In next week, week 3, you will learn the themes in Jainar and other aspects apparent in the novel. Bye-bye.